We're gonna go into strength training for golf and we're gonna start right now. So I believe some of the biggest low hanging fruit in the sport of golf is that our golfers aren't trained that well. We think that just because they're swinging a light golf club that they don't need a ton of strength. Okay, we have to change the way that we look at strength and recognize that strength also means high power output. It means impulse force over time. It means being rotationally strong. It means learning how to use our hips at very high speeds. And that's exactly what's going on in the sport of golf. There's a high speed action that takes place. So one of the biggest factors that strength coaches miss when they're talking about golf is that they don't recognize how quickly this is happening. So they might do things in the weight room that lead to big hypertrophic gains and then this can alter how the golfer's actually swinging and then over time this can alter their mechanics which can then lead to less control on the course. So when we're looking at golfers in general, we need to have high speed, very aggressive swings. We also need to have more precise controlled swings, especially when we're talking about putting. So we have to look at those four key characteristics that golfers can develop today to help improve their overall performance on the course. So that first key concept is gonna be known as blast impulse. Now, bear with me, if we have golfers, everything is happening in very rapid reactions, okay? Everything's occurring very quickly. Impulse training is gonna be force over time, okay? There's a very short period of time to apply a ton of force, and that's what we're talking about with golf, is they have a shorter range of motion to apply that force in that short period of time. Blast impulse training is gonna be focusing on a half second to one second of force production, okay? So this is occurring very, very rapidly. So how can we do this with golfers? We need to look at training golfers strictly from the neurological adaptations, okay? So we need to focus on things like plyometrics. We want to teach our golfers how to apply a ton of force into the ground and then get that force back and then apply that into the club. They need to be extremely mobile in the upper back. They need to be mobile in their thoracic rotation. They also need to be able to apply that force in a short period of time. So that means doing things like power cleans, dumbbell snatches, lots of plyometrics, okay? Lots of unilateral plyometrics, lots of side to side plyometrics to start to focus on how to apply that force and how to recruit all of these different motor units throughout their body in that short period of time to make connection. That's gonna take us into that second key concept. That's where we're gonna focus on dynamic trunk control, okay? If we're a golfer and our trunk is all over the place, we're not gonna be able to actually use that energy and apply that through our hips into the club, okay? So everything is going to be coming back to hips, trunk, shoulders, hips, trunk, shoulders, okay? If we have good ground reaction forces, okay, that travels from the ground through our hips, into our trunk, into our hands, into the club, now we can hit the ball a little bit further. Ideally, we'll also have better control, okay? So that dynamic trunk control now comes into place. So our first key concept was blast impulse training. Our second key concept is gonna be dynamic trunk control work. So now we have a hydro weight. This is a great example. We can use a hydro weight to train specific rotational aspects of the movements. We can use the hydro weight while we're doing jump lunges and pause in the split. So now we have that rigid trunk while we're using our legs, okay? So that's some of the key concepts here is when we're talking about golfers is getting our golfers to be more coordinated, to learn how to be more athletic so that they have more control over their stroke. That third key concept is gonna be focusing on reflexive strength training. Golf occurs very quickly. Okay, it's extremely fast. We don't need massive hypertrophic gains. Golfers don't need to look like me. Okay, they don't need to be super stiff. I do have a hole in one at Willow Hollow at number nine. But, <laughs> but one of the things that we have to focus on is because it occurs so rapidly, reflexive strength training trains our nervous system to react through different positions as quickly as possible. So doing unilateral hydro weight swings, okay, holding into that hip lock. Now we're training reflexive movements, swinging up with that hydro weight, pausing overhead. We're training blast impulse, we're training reflexive work, and we're training dynamic trunk control all at one 
time, okay? So this is going to lead to massive gains. When we have greater neurological adaptations in our golfers, now they start to apply those coordinative gains on the links, out on the course, and that's that key concept, right? If we can get our athletes to be more proprioceptive, get our golfers to be more proprioceptive with their feet. Let's say they're doing PVC pipe walks, then they're doing hydro weight reflexive work. That leads to that dynamic trunk control and that leads to training that blast impulse. And ideally, now they have greater control out on the course. Now, before we give you that fourth key concept, if you need help with your strength training for golf, click on the link down below, head over to peakstrength.app. You can pick up our app that we designed specifically with golf in mind. You can go in, take the survey, fill out that you're a golfer, and you will get a golf-based program that adapts to your needs to help you be more successful. Now, finally, that key concept to tie everything together is going to be based around power endurance or impulse endurance. We're playing 18 holes. We might be playing 18 holes if you have a club championship over three or four days. So you're gonna get fatigued. You're gonna start to fatigue rapidly, right? We need to be able to have power-based endurance over a long period of time, two, three, four hours. So what we can do in the weight room is we can do lighter plyometrics. We can take concepts from throwers, right? That's one of the big things that I think we're missing with strength training for golf is that if you look at what shot putters are doing, if you look at what hammer throwers are doing, now you can see that rotational strength. You can see that rapid power output. You can see how their trunk is so stable. And that leads to this tremendous amount of power output in a short period of time. Now, we don't need to be big hulking shot putters, but we do need to have that speed and we need to replicate that speed consistently. That's where power endurance comes into play. If we're doing plyometrics like bunny hops, for five sets of 12 to 15 reps. Now that athlete starts to see that power endurance transfer. Let's say we take something simple like reflexive work. We could do six sets of three on each side. That's gonna help improve our power endurance. Ideally, this is gonna happen over the span of 12 to 16 weeks. But when we do this in conjunction with our actual play time out on the course, now we can start to develop that better power endurance. Now we can have that greater striking ability that we had on hole one, two, and three. Now we have that on the back nine on hole 14, 15, 16, as we're starting to close out that round. That's that really key concept that can lead to greater performance. So we wanna focus on dynamic trunk control. We wanna focus on blast impulse. We wanna improve our power endurance and we can do that all through reflexive base training. So if you need help, click on that link down below, head over to peakstrength.app and you can pick up our Peak Strength app today to help you become a better golfer. And remember, if you wanna become a freak, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.